How can the situation in Hong Kong be resolved? Police are accused of intensifying a crackdown. Many protesters are holding out and China says foreign countries are now involved. So if that's right, how does it complicate an already tough situation in the territory? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the programme. I'm Hala Mahiedin. The protests which began in Hong Kong around six months ago show no signs of dying down. A days-long standoff at Hong Kong Polytechnic University has led the US Senate to pass a bill aimed at censuring Beijing. The new Hong Kong Human Rights Bill has infuriated China, which accuses the US of ignoring protester violence. Neither side looks like backing down, so how will this end? Well, we'll be speaking with our guests shortly, but first, Sarah Clark reports on the standoff between police and students who are refusing to leave a university campus. In a city rocked by violence and months of protests, everyday life is carrying on for many. Primary and secondary schools have resumed classes after being closed for more than a week. Some major roads have also reopened, but traffic is still congested and some rail lines remain blocked. At Polytechnic University in central Kowloon, up to 100 protesters are refusing to leave. Riot police have surrounded the campus, ready to make arrests if any demonstrators try to escape. It has been a disastrous life for spending these days in Polytechnic University because we can't live here. The supply of food, water, electricity is going to be run out and no one can escape it because the police is surrounding us. On Tuesday, around 800 surrendered. 300 are under the age of 18 and can't be charged with rioting. Others managed to escape the campus and avoid arrest. Some protesters have attempted to flee over the last few hours through the university's drainage system, but they were arrested. Other attempts were made to escape overnight, but those students were met by riot police and retreated back inside the campus. The United States Senate has backed the pro-democracy protest movement in Hong Kong. In a unanimous vote, senators passed the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act, which threatens to invoke trade sanctions on the city if the US considers human rights have been violated. We in the United States stand in solidarity with the democratic protesters who have every right to assemble and petition their government for their rights as citizens of Hong Kong. The bill will now go to the House of Representatives. The Hong Kong government has rejected the bill, demanding the US stop interfering in the city's uh, internal affairs. Okay. These rights are being protected by the basic law of Hong Kong, Article 4 of basic law, protect human rights. And we have seen that, well, all these rights, including rights given to uh, anybody working in Hong Kong, reporting in Hong Kong. So these are our self-interest to do good. So I don't see there's any valid reason for changing that. And that's, that explains why in our statement we strongly sort of object to uh, any attempt by any country try to sort of uh, influence Hong Kong's own interests. District elections will be held in Hong Kong this weekend. The government has not ruled out postponing that vote if there's more violence. Sarah Clark, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. Well, let's now get the thoughts of our guests. Joining us from Beijing is Einar Tangen. He's a political analyst and advisor to the Chinese government. On Skype from Hong Kong, David Zweig, director of Transnational China Consulting Limited. And in London, Benedict Rogers. He's co-founder of Hong Kong Watch. That's a human rights organisation. Gentlemen, welcome to the programme. Let me start with you, uh, Einar Tangen. We've had six months of protest. The, the situation is clearly deteriorating. Just how did we get to this point? Why are we in this violent stalemate? Well, you have a movement that does not necessarily have a, a core of leaders, and uh, they, it's kind of metamorphosized. They, every time they get something they want, uh, they identify something else. And I, I say that they, I mean, it is a group decision. And as a result, it has just uh, spiraled downwards. Now it is just uh, simply uh, almost a terrorist movement that is r r literally holding the people of Hong Kong hostage. 
a, a terrorist movement, you would say, but these protests, when they started out, there were many hundreds of thousands, if not a million. Are you suggesting that, that this uh, it constitutes a terrorist movement, that that amount of uh, support is coming from Hong Kong? No, that, that, not, not at all. I mean, the, the, in the beginning, uh, they were exercising their free uh, rights uh, to protest. They, were, they had permits to do this. Uh, they were peaceful. They were going forward. That is quite different from what we have today. When you start seeing the, you know, these uh, kids on the street, masked, all right, with batons, with weapons, uh, battling with police, setting fire to public buildings, attacking the MTR, preventing people from getting to work, preventing people, uh, children from going to school, that is terrorism. You are making people afraid. Benedict Rogers, uh, your views on this. This is terrorism being conducted against the citizens of Hong Kong. Well, I certainly don't condone uh, the violent acts uh, by the students, but I think it's really important to understand uh, what, where this has come from. I think it is uh, fueled by police brutality. Uh, the police started the violence. Uh, as has been said, the protests were totally peaceful at the beginning, but the police responded to the protests uh, with consistent, totally disproportionate uh, violence and brutality. We now have reports of torture of people in detention, of uh, allegations of, of rape, uh, as well as the constant tear gas, pepper spray, uh, beatings with, with batons, uh, uh, shooting rubber bullets, and, and even live ammunition. So I don't condone the violent acts by the protesters, but it is a, a desperate response to uh, a, a, an already brutal situation that was initiated by the police. Uh, David Zweig, you are in Hong Kong for us. Uh, how would you respond to these, these two perspectives of how we got to this point? Uh, this is clearly a violent stalemate. Uh, is it coming as the result of a concerted terror campaign? Or is this the result of uh, people who feel they have been unfairly treated by the police and there is likely to be no resolution until that is addressed? Well, the, the, clearly the the violence has gotten out of hand. So on that sense, I think Beijing has a, a v valid position. But, but on a couple of points that were made, first of all, I think Hong Kong people still strongly support the protesters. Uh, and I think they're largely understanding of the violence. They don't condone the violence, but they generally understand it because they feel that it's come from a, a, a Hong Kong government that has only made one concession, that hasn't responded to the rest of the concession. So I disagree with the, the view from Beijing. Um, and uh, uh, it's been a long time since they've responded to, to anything else. Um, so in that sense, uh, the, the, the protests have uh, simply escalated. Uh, pe people, you know, the, there's a serious battle here, I think, for the freedoms uh, that people have here in Hong Kong. And people feel that Beijing has been acting in a way, and Carrie Lam, the, the chief executive, um, has been acting to facilitate greater controls, uh, more integration, even legal integration uh, between Hong Kong and the mainland. And, and the young people uh, don't want to do that, you know? And, okay. and so uh, they, they originally began to protest. The citizens joined with them. And then uh, it got much more, you know, violence on both sides, I, I, I would argue. Clearly, the police have used some excessive violence. There's no doubt about that. But as the gentleman from Beijing said, you know, the, the Molotov cocktails, setting people on fire, uh, that's not a good thing either. It, 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 and uh, very few, uh, I, I wager, would, would disagree with you. I know, Tangan, how would you re respond to that? We are in this violent stalemate. How do we get out of it? You pointed out earlier that these were valid protests at the beginning. They had permits. They were protesting in large, large numbers. And yet they argue they are not listened to. And this is the only uh, course of action they have left to take. What will it take to resolve this situation? Well, I, I'm going to dispute your ass assertion that there is nothing for them to do. There are elections coming on, up on the 24th. If it is, in fact, a democracy and these people want a rule of law and they believe in democracy, they should vote. I don't recall that there's anything in the Constitution that says that mobs can assemble on the street, all right, and, and whether peacefully or not, and take over the government. That is not how it works, all right? 
So if it is in fact a democracy, they should be exercising their rights at the ballot box, not by throwing Molotov cocktails, not by killing 70-year-old men. Right? This is unacceptable. This idea that people keep saying that I don't condone the violence, but, you know, I understand it. That's like somebody saying, I don't condone the fact that they killed people at Auschwitz, but I understand it. There is oh, no understanding this level of violence. Okay, D David Swig, I could see you were trying to get in there. Yeah, I, I think I think I don't disagree that, that the level of violence has surpassed what people uh, uh, would would like to see. I, I think there's no doubt about that. But but you can't ask people to stop the violence if they don't know what they're going to get in return. Now I agree on the elections, you know, and we're hoping that in fact so you don't the protesters want the will to stop. will tone. Can I finish? We hope that the protesters will tone it down, um, and so that we can go forward on on the elections because the elections could go very well. For the democratic forces here, but but when Anon says you know the use democratic processes, it's worth remembering that in uh, uh, 2016 there was the legislative elections and uh, the local government uh, through six members who were elected by people through the parliament uh, through you know the elections threw them out of the parliament. Uh, that was a pretty silly thing to do. Two of them, I think most people would say that was okay. But they threw four people out of the parliament. By doing that, they created uh, a uh, enough votes in the legislature so that Mrs. Lamb thought that she could push through the extradition treaty. She was told what, widely a million people marched. Law, the Law Society, a lot of people told her not to do it. She ignored that, and she tried to push the the bill okay. through. So, so sorry, to so David Swig, I'm afraid I'm sorry, first, I have to cut you off. Um, so th 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 a solution, that's, that's t two of our guests now are suggesting the solution here lies in the ballot box. Uh, Benedict Rogers, would you agree? We were hearing that Carrie Lam, um, she was elected in, but was uh, carrying out policies that were not amenable to protesters, the, the solution, therefore, would be to vote her out. Yes, I, I, well, I totally agree that uh, people should allow the elections to take place, should not give the government any excuse or justification for delaying or cancelling them, uh, and people should exercise their democratic uh, rights uh, in these local elections. Of course, these are local elections, uh, so they, they, don't, they won't uh, result in any uh, change of leadership at the top, but nevertheless, they will result in a an expression uh, through the ballot box of the people, and that's uh, incredibly important. I very much agree with, Dave, with David Zweig uh, on two points. Firstly, um, we need to remember that uh, uh, not just the uh, leg legislators who were thrown out, but also uh, over recent years, a number of candidates disqualified, including uh, one candidate, Joshua Wong, uh, uh, disqualified from taking part in these uh, elections. So they're extremely imperfect. Uh, elections, but nevertheless, people should uh, take part. And I also agree with David uh, that at every step of the way over the last six months, Carrie Lam personally uh, has had opportunities where she could have averted uh, the situation deteriorating. Uh, and at every step, she's mishandled it, refused to listen to people, refused to uh, compromise or, or engage. Um, and uh, sh she is responsible, ultimately, for this crisis. Um, Einar Tangen, uh, let me put it to you, then. The, 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 these elections will take place, but ultimately the deck is stacked against these protesters. So any politician who has a tin ear in your mind uh, deserves uh, to have people on the streets committing acts of violence randomly, including a Japanese tourists. Uh, you know, I, I find this hard to believe that uh, people are actually saying that we shouldn't stop the violence that let me finish this time. So, you know, this idea, you know, I, I noticed David said we. I, I don't exactly know who we is. But at this point, there is nobody to negotiate with. You seem to have a lot of voices, many of them saying different things. The initial request was to have the extradition treaty, which was extremely reasonable, more reasonable than any extradition treaty that Hong Kong has with other countries. And then when it was finally given, all of a sudden, there appeared more. This is what happens when you have a mob that does not have any idea of how to achieve its solutions. It simply stays in the street demanding more 
and more. Okay, that, that's, the, that's an important point, and this is a point that keeps recurring. Uh, Benedict and David, you have both stated that we don't uh, approve of the violence, but until this violent conduct ends, it's not unreasonable that um, the Hong Kong authorities or Beijing would feel the need to clamp down. You cannot have these kind of violent incidents, Molotov cocktails, on the streets. Uh, I, I mean, I, I would call for the violence on both sides to stop, and I would urge the protesters to continue to protest uh, peacefully. I don't think they should give up uh, their very reasonable demands, but I, I totally agree that throwing Molotov cocktails and, and so on uh, is, is not acceptable. So I would call them, on them to stop the violent acts, but I would also urge the Hong Kong government and the police to exercise restraint uh, in, uh, in, in how they handle this. And yes, those who've committed criminal acts should be uh, held accountable through the criminal justice system, but they shouldn't be beaten and raped and pepper sprayed in, in their face and, and in some cases even uh, shot. Ainur Tengen. Completely, that is uh, completely. When, when are you saying somebody was raped? Why would you throw that in there? If somebody had been raped, the international press would have been all over it, all right? Why would you say something like that? Add that in surreptitiously. You're, you're obviously biased if you think that this is going to score points Benedict. with the people watching this interview. Uh, Benedict Rogers, I'll let you respond. Uh, uh, there have been uh, several uh, serious allegations of gang rape uh, in detention by the police. Uh, I, I accept that... Uh, that hasn't um, been uh, widely reported. Uh, it may well come out in more detail. And I emphasize their allegations at this stage. I, I haven't been able to verify them, uh, but those allegations are there. Then why would you say that there was rape if they're only allegations? Uh, I said several times, uh, allegations. Right, OK, L I'd like to leave this talking point for now. Um, and I do want to, to, to get to what is what is driving these protests, because um, I know you have referenced it um, a couple of times, the, 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 the element of perhaps foreign interference. Now, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, um, has said that uh, what's really driving these protests isn't politics. He says economic development is the golden key to resolving the problems facing Hong Kong today. And some extreme anti-China forces in the US are trying to turn Hong Kong into a battleground for US-Chinese rivalry. They want to turn Hong Kong's degree of autonomy into de facto independence. Now, th this talking point has also been made um, in this debate. Einar Tangen, would you agree with this? Do you think that there is an external element driving these protests? Well, OK, there's two levels that we can talk about here. One is allegations uh, that there are nonprofits, uh, mostly religiously based, who do not like communism because they see it as an impediment. But this has not been proven. But the thing that is very clear is that there's a lot of oxygen being given by people in the U.S. at a very high level. The State Department, the vice president, um, congressmen, uh, the bills that have been passed today indicating that they are going to take a very uh, jaundiced view towards Hong Kong if they feel it is not enjoying, quote, the rights that they believe it should have. Now, what's interesting about this is let us put it on the other foot. Let us say China was to say, we don't like the level of gun violence in the United States. We don't like the wars you, you cause. We don't like the fact that you don't take, have a proper uh, social security net. We are therefore going to judge you. Now, let's take that one step further and have every country out there deciding that they should make demands on other countries before they trade on them based on what they do. You would not have a world order. You would have world disorder, simply the jungle, exactly what Donald Trump has been preaching since day one when he said, make America great again, okay. at the expense, obviously, of the rest. OK, so we're, we're in the final five minutes of this discussion, gentlemen, so if we could keep your responses uh, quite brief. Uh, let me come to you, Benedict Rogers. Do you think that, that that is a valid complaint from the Chinese? Why should foreign governments be passing laws and passing judgment on what happens in what is essentially uh, China's internal territory? I don't think it's a valid complaint at all. First of all, let me say that it's completely absurd to suggest that the protests themselves are uh, in any way orchestrated or influenced uh, by uh, uh, outside uh, powers. The 
the protesters are Hong Kongers and it was entirely their initiative. I think um, there are two points I would say about the international community. First of all, the United Kingdom in particular uh, has not just a moral but also a legal responsibility to uh, monitor and speak out for the defense of uh, the freedoms that were promised to the people of, of Hong Kong uh, uh, before the handover um, through uh, as a signatory to the Sino-British Joint Declaration, which is still a legal treaty at the United Nations valid until 2047. Okay. But then the rest of the international community, I think, has, has a responsibility to stand up for universal human rights. And because Hong Kong is such an international city, I think it's understandable that the world has an interest. Um, and uh, David Zweig, what, what's your view on this? Do you think there is an external element? Is the US trying to stir up trouble uh, with the, the bill that was passed in the Senate? Well, I think there's... I, I'm pretty much in opposition to what the United States uh, Congress has done. I, I don't think it helps the situation at all. I think it pours fire, uh, you know, fuel on the fire. Um, but I would like to take uh, exception to the argument and, and President Xi's argument that this is all about economics. And I don't see this as being all about economics. And I think that, that uh, China just has refused to recognize that since, oh, I'd say 2003, it, it has consistently tried to constrain the freedoms here of the people in Hong Kong. And I see this as the bottom line. And that the, the young people here uh, have another 27 years, 28 years to live under one country, two systems. And if they feel, and they do feel, that China is pushing the system more and more towards one country and away from two systems and away from the freedoms that they want, you know, these kids, then they're going to be out there in the streets in some ways. Uh, and they have the support of the population here that feels at least 60 percent, 65 percent of the population that agrees with them and that feels that there are these constraints coming from Beijing. Okay. Housing is a problem. Economics is a problem. There's no doubt. But that's not what puts people. People don't go and throw Molotov cocktails because they can't get an apartment. Okay. They'll do it for freedom. Okay. And I, I know, Tangan, um, just quickly, how bothered is China by these criticisms from the West? How much will this change uh, the approach towards Hong Kong? It won't change it at all. I mean, this, this is a, a terrible situation where you have a PR war going between two warring powers. And unfortunately, Hong Kong and its youth are being used cynically uh, by one side. OK, and we have 30 seconds left, uh, gentlemen. I'm going to give you a 10-second answer each. Um, how does this end, Einar Tangen? It doesn't end well. Uh, eventually, uh, these, these people will push uh, and there will be a, a reaction by China. OK, Benedict Rogers? I think it should end with the government addressing the protesters' concerns. Whether it will or not, we'll have to see. OK, and David Zweig, um, as a resident in Hong Kong, how does this end for you? Well, we're all very concerned about the fact we don't really see uh, a, a possible outcome. But I think something like a commission of inquiry making some response, making some concessions to the demand still, uh, in particular that demand, uh, and then it would deal with both the, violent, the violence on both sides, uh, which we've heard you know, both sides complaining about one side complains about in this evening, complaining about police violence and one side complains about the young people's violence. Well, let's get down to the question of violence and, and, and have a good debate and discussion about it and analysis and have a commission to look into it, and because that's the only way out of this. And speaking of debate, discussion and analysis, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our time. I'd like to thank uh, all three of my guests, Einar Tangen, David Zweig and Benedict Rogers. I'd like to thank you too for watching. And of course, you can see this programme again anytime by visiting the website, aljazeera.com. And as ever, the conversation will continue online. Just head to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story or join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story or tweet me directly at Hala Mohideen. All that remains for me now to say is for me and the whole Inside Story team, it's bye for now.